Hi. <laughs> I'm doing my first video today and I just wanted to do it kind of quick and, and simple so I can figure out how to edit it and take care of everything I need to do to help you guys learn how to doodle a little bit. So it's October and one of my favorite things to doodle are pumpkins. So this is pumpkins on a sign that I did recently. Um, very, very simple to do. So I'm going to teach you how to do the outline of the pumpkin, the stems, and the leaves. So that's on a sign. This is one that I did a few years back um, with just brown craft wrapping paper and colored pencil. Both sides are done. Pretty cool. And then I stitched it. I don't know if you can see. I think so. Stitched. So then I did a demo the other day at work where we were trying some fabric markers and this was using some of the Gansai Tombay uh, watercolor from Kuretake. So this can't be washed but it would be super fun on a little patch on a journal cover which is the plan. This one is done with fabric color markers on muslin. That other one was muslin too. Fabric color markers. Same pumpkin, just colored differently each time. So what you need to start with is some um, watercolor. I've got a bunch of colored pencils here. I'm not sure if those are in the frame or not. Let's move them. Watercolor, or not watercolor pencils, I'm sorry, just colored pencils. Three very, very important tools are a pencil, a marker, and an eraser. Um, so I'm gonna do a few step outs so you can kind of see, do you know, just like they do in the baking shows, so basically, let me find a smaller piece to begin with. Basically what you're going to want to do to get your pumpkin shape, see if I can do this so you can see, is you're going to draw kind of an oval, and I'm drawing kind of hard with the pencil, so hopefully it shows up on the film, an oval, and then you're going to kind of tuck an oval behind it. So almost a half oval, if you were to continue, it would look like that. And then another half oval which if you were to continue again, it would look like that. So, again, it's an oval, done super hard with a pencil, <laughs> and then tuck a second oval behind it, and then a third oval, and that's the basic shape of the pumpkin, like this. Okay, so once you've done that, you have to decide on a stem. My go-to is always just that, that, and that, which is a rectangle, right? You could go straight up and crazy crooked because that's actually how a stem looks more. So on this one, it would be crazy crooked, kind of off to the side, right? So let's get another piece of paper here. So now you've got your oval for your pumpkin. It doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, pumpkins aren't perfect, so the more shaky you are, the better. Then your second oval, and your third oval, and that's your pumpkin shape. Then decide on what stem makes you happy. I've kind of been into these crooked straight ones. Put that in there. Last step is a leaf. And to do a leaf, the easy way is to create an oval with a point. So basically you've done an oval like that, and then you're going to uh, kind of point it off at one end and then be able to come back and make it super pointy. And you could leave your leaf just like that if you wanted to and, you know, color this green and this a darker green. But I like to take it one step further and come back and add some little points on the oval and create a leaf that way so that without the step outs, I can do it now after a million years of drawing it to look like a leaf but just base everything on basic shapes. And then I would put a line through that and then some uh, highlight lines so you can color in different colors of greens. So again, I'll show you on this big guy. That show up, I'm hoping. So there's that leaf. And that was drawn with a white Signo pen, pretty cool. The stem is pretty cool on this one too because it's got all different highlights of browns. So, again, let's bring that back to, that's watercolor paper, so it's pretty cool. So I'm going to go a little lighter, hopefully you can see. So you've got your lightly drawn pencil sketch of your pumpkin. 
shaky pumpkin because I'm shaking. Then you want to put your stem, however you want to do your stem, and a leaf can be tucked behind your pumpkin. That's going to be my leaf. Or what you could do is you could add a little stem and have a leaf hanging down like that. That's just that elongated oval. And then we're going to do what I call swoopies for those of you guys who have seen me do stuff before. It's just a vine. That's a curly cue. And we'll add another vine in here. So hopefully you can see all of that with the pencil. Then we're going to get rid of that pencil. I got a micron here. Hopefully it works. I haven't tried my microns for a while. And you're going to go over it, but not exactly where you did it. You know, kind of do it if you made some mistakes and you're not happy with it. Do it off to one edge and come back over your, because we're going to erase. So go over everything. I hate that stem, so I'm going to change it completely up and come up with that stem. And my pen is not the best one, so sometimes I go over things two or three times with a pen, and that just kind of adds to your outline. Then your leaf, especially if you've got a dead pen like this, which is going in the dead pen pile when I'm done. Who needs dead pens? There's your leaf. Then we're going to add this fun little hangy downy leaf. It's a little different. And your swoopy here. And another swoopy down here. Swoop de doos. So that's what you're, you've ended up with. Now I'm going to erase it, erase all the lines. If you don't have one of these, go out and buy one. It's a Pentel Click Eraser, God's gift to erasing. Even with carpal tunnel, I can do it, but I'll be paying for it later today. So, we're going to erase all the lines. There they go. See ya, lines. Because here's a cool, uh, interesting tip about watercolors. Uh, if you've left any pencil on your paper and then you go to watercolor, too bad, so sad. It's not coming off. So, let me grab a different micron uh, out of the box here. Here's a 002, so maybe we can add some detail. You can see that better. So again, kind of shaky lines, doesn't have to be perfect. That's our stem, and we're gonna add some leaf veins or highlight lines here for the leaf. And that cute little leaf, I think is done, but we'll kind of outline it a little bit, give it a double or a triple uh, outline line just because my pen messed up on that other one, so see you can fix anything. And now that those have double outlines, we gotta come back with our pumpkin and kinda match it up, so we're gonna add the double outlines there too. So, get that all dialed in. I don't like this side, so it is getting a triple outline line. My pen really messed up over there, but that's all right. It's a pumpkin. Add a few extras in there until you're happy. Add some shading in your uh, stem if you want to. I'm a big scribbler. You'll see when we get to the colored pencil part. So then the next thing you want to do is grab your watercolors and your uh, watercolor rag. Don't ever paint without a rag. Can you see that? It's my trusty rag. It's been with me forever. And it looks like I missed a little erasing here. So, get rid of all your erasure. Um, I know a lot of artists that use a pencil. I'm a big proponent of fingers, so use your fingers. Pick up a little color. I've already added water to my watercolors so that they should flow really nice. And if you don't use a water brush pen, I highly advise you to go get one. Because I don't know if you can see, but I'm not a very good artist with watercolors. So, you just kind of want to smear them all together. Add a little yellow in there, a little brown, a little green, because pumpkins aren't all orange. These watercolors are from, uh, let's see, the name of it is Angora Watercolor. I don't know if that's showing up or not. Angora, you can get them at the craft store. Or if you live near me, you can get them at Ben Franklin, because there is no better craft store than Ben Franklin in Grass Valley. Little plug there. So get your watercolors all in there till you're happy. I say less color sometimes is the best. Let your uh, let your background show through. A little bit of white in there is pretty cool. I like it. I don't know. 
I really don't know what I'm doing. I'm really not a watercolor artist, so anybody who's watching this who is, please forgive me. Then I mixed my favorite color greens, which are more olive green. Just add a little green and brown together and use the lid of your paints. And come back and paint those in there. Grab some regular greens. Add a few different colors of greens in for your leaves because it's just really cool. It's still pretty wet here, so you've got a lot of playroom. Sometimes teal is fun in with your leaves, and a really darky blue teal is kind of fun in there. I need just one more green somewhere. Pick it up from there. And if you've gone outside your lines, hey, who cares? That's what kind of gives it some personality. Hopefully you can see that. See, it's kind of got personality coming on. So we're going to add the stem in, just a little bit of brown, a darker brown, lighter brown, kind of blend them all together. And again, leave some white showing through, so no big deal. And I kind of go over the um, swoopy stem, or swoopy vine, whatever it is, with a little more watercolor. This is a really important part when you don't have a blow dryer or a heat tool. You blow with your mouth. Get it to dry a little bit faster for the video. Or you could shake it like a Polaroid picture. That might help. So we'll kill some time here. How's everybody doing today? It's October. Okay. All right, so now we've kind of got that going on and done. So let's bring in our Prismacolor pencils. Um, I love to use Prismacolor, and I am learning to love the Ink Tense by Derwent's, but not a huge fan yet. And what I like to do with the pencils is go back over some of your watercolor. And like I said, I was a scribbler. Well, it's very true. I love getting some added detail in there. I don't know if you guys can see that with the pencil. So it's still a little wet. So we're going to let that dry for a minute and we'll come back to it because I just want to show you really quick uh, if I can find a larger pen in my cigar box. Well, we'll do it in gray because I'm not finding a larger um, pen because I leave them all over the house. This is a Zig Writer, Kurtucky, uh, one of my favorite companies of all times. So if you wanted to write on that and you wanted to write Halloween, I'll just show you really quick. So if you, if you um, kind of go with some squiggly lines, see how that is? Then you go back with your thicker pen and kind of fill it in. We're not going to spend a lot of time on lettering right now because we're going to do that in other videos. But it would be fun to add some lettering onto our little pumpkin. So you've got it super squiggly. Then you're going to add in some blood drips. <laughs> Pardon me, but it is, it is October. So you're going to do some like candle wax dripping or blood dripping from a vampire, you know, stuff like that. And that's basically how you're going to do that lettering. The fun part about that is once it's done, you can then go back with your pen, or your, I'm sorry, your paint, and go kind of over it with some oranges or reds or whatever and look like it's kind of drippy. And that's super fun. So there's how to get going on your Halloween lettering. I'm not sure that the pumpkin's dry yet, but we're going to say it is, so. Don't worry, I'll get the hang of this. So we're gonna go back over this. Eh, it's still not really dry, so you're not really catching all the cool colors you can get with. So I'll show you some scribbling on the outside. So it can't just be plain uh, on the outside either. You gotta give it a base. And I am literally, seriously, scribbling. My favorite thing to do. Um, then take greens. You can add some extra little doodads with your swoopies. Give that a little bit of highlight. Take some more colored pencil and kind of go outside the box. Add some other colors in there. Kind of just finishes it off if you give it some of these scribbles. And I think what I'm going to do is, since I don't want to wreck this and it's pretty wet still, 
I'm going to tell you guys that when this is done and I finish it, I'm going to sew around the edges and I'm going to add it to a card, probably for my friend Carmen because, you know, it is Halloween and she is all about Halloween 365 days a year. So I'll just put it on my blog so you guys can head over there and see what the finished piece will look like. And that is, you should all know this by now, but it's Lindsay, L-I-N-D-S-A-Y, Ostrom, O-S-T-R-O-M, at blogspot.com. And I hope you like the video because, well, my goal is that by January, we're going to have some real life classes, not just these fun little creative things that we're doing here uh, for free. Hopefully, where is it? Ah! And maybe I'll get my act together with getting things straight and whatever. Hope you liked it. Happy Halloween. Happy October. Love it.